While Alta missed out on a domestic double last season, their retention of the Elite Serian title has allowed them to continue making appearances within the UEFA Champions League. Speaking of which, the 2028-29 Champions League campaign was still underway with two more games to go in January, but with Alta being in a good place as they managed to secure a playoff spot within the first six games of the massive group stage. In order to prepare for the Champions League games as the Norwegian season wrapped up, Olaf Fury didn't hesitate to pull the trigger on the option to purchase Harald Tangen from Molda FK. But while he's overjoyed at having a player in his prime, he's also preparing to say goodbye to a club icon. Since the start of last season, Marius Buskar Larsson's appearances as a starter were becoming more and more limited due to his own limits as a player as well as better players being brought in to handle domestic and continental competitions. During the course of last season, he'd begun to attract suitors for his services, but its UAE side, Awaso, came forth with the best offer of the bunch. Several days later, Olaf Fury accepted the 2.2 million fee for one of the few men who'd been with him since the start of the journey. His contributions to the club in clutch goals are the stuff of legends that will not be forgotten. So long, partner. Right back at you, buddy. But life goes on, and with it, Olaf Fury had to get ready for the upcoming games after a short offseason. That meant extensions for some of their key players, along with bringing promising young players like Luis Guilherme, Jean Paulo, Guillermo Mendoza, and Ivan Molina, who looks ready to start games on their lineup. But as the team is getting back into practice for the upcoming Champions League games against Bayern Munich and Napoli, well, they knew Bayern and Napoli would be tough, but they just ran through Alta like a hot knife through butter. Thus, Alta has to settle for 16th place in the group stage table, and with it, a playoff knockout round matchup that would see them put against AZ Alkmaar of the Netherlands. The first leg saw a fairly even matchup that ended in a 1-1 draw in the Netherlands, and in the return leg in Norway, it was a low-key affair in which Ivan Molina made the biggest impact with the only goal of the matchup and thus got Alta through to the round of 16 where they would face... Paris Saint-Germain. Yes, sir! <laughs> well, that's the end of that. On the bright side, Alta made some good money out of this run, and the Champions League was a training camp and a half for the team to be prepped for the Elite Sedian season, as Alta were once again expected to win the league by the pundits. There was also the fact that Olaf Fury was so upset about being pants down by the French that he brought Alting Onesland back on a permanent deal to strengthen the midfield, found a young re prospect on a free transfer in Mano Soileris, then got Nicolo Battaglia on loan from Brescia to strengthen the wing positions, and finally got the team a half decent backup keeper in Giadine White, even if he had to pay out of the wazoo to get him. But as the trade deadline wrapped up, he also said his goodbyes to Brage Quitilde as he was sent off to Molda FK for 3.1 million. No bread, no water, just meat. That's what's gonna happen today. <laughs> Tangents aside, Alta starts off in the Elite Sedian and the NM Cup and campaigns this season by ripping and tearing through anything and everything that moves. With their only non-victory result being a nil-nil draw against Molda FK at the end of April. But it isn't just that Alta's winning, it's the fact that they're winning with Andreas Lerkehau becoming an immovable fortress and only allowing three goals to go through him during that entire stretch, while Ivan Molina, Murten Sponas, and returning Loni Chue Sung Yun did the bulk of the goal scoring for the team. Those efforts on both sides of the ball have carried the team through the Elite Serien campaign and through relatively easy matchups in the Norwegian Cup against lower league teams in Sannes Ulf, Jerv, and Ralfos football. June saw a lot of the same kind of defensive dominance within the Elite Serien as Alta won all three league games that month and then handled their business accordingly against much tougher competition in the Norwegian Cup's latter rounds. 
surviving a KG game against Songdal in the round of 16, and then a quarterfinal round matchup against Volarenga that saw Alta's other yearly tradition come to light, as a 1-1 draw brought them the penalty kicks, where Andreas Lorkehal yet again proved his current form wasn't some sort of fluke by saving the first two penalty kicks, and Alta handled the rest, punching their way into the semifinals where they would be pitted against Odds BK. But between the successful Champions League stint for their size and stature, along with the current dominance they were showcasing in the Norwegian League and Cup, that started to attract interest from teams outside of Norway for a lot of the young players within the Alta roster. While Olaf Fury was more than happy with selling Milan Hoke to Altai for 2.2 million, he wasn't exactly keen on letting the likes of Spunas, Son Che Wung, Chue Sung Yun, and Andreas Lerkehal go anywhere. However, Morten Spunas eventually had a 13 million offer crone that could rise to become 16 million, and after some convincing from Olaf Fury to get a nice year long loan back length clause in that transfer, well, Stoke City struck with another Norwegian prospect yet again. Yeah, but could he do it on a cold, rainy night in Stoke? Yes! Yes, he can! He's played in Norway since he was fing 15! God damn it! <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, lost myself for a second there. Let's move on, shall we? 24 hours later. July did start at the rough side with two draws in a row against IK Start and Odds BK, but bounce back wins against Viking FK and Volorenga ensured a 16 unbeaten game streak in the Elite Sedian and quite a large gap in points within the league at this point where Olaf Fury was starting to eye the possibility of an unbeaten season, something that has only been done by Rosenborg in 2010. But with the end of July and beginning of August, the transfer window opened up again and with it, a new signing arrived in town. A signing that Olaf Fury had worked out as far back as January, but would take effect right after the Volorenga game, as he brought in veteran center back Rob Holding into the fold. What? In this universe, he didn't leave Arsenal until 2024, and had stints with West Ham, Middlesbrough, AZ in the Netherlands, and was lingering around in whole city before Alta opted to pick him up on a free transfer to just give the young kids in the defense a mentor figure, once they got him up to speed on his Norwegian. Anyways, time for the playoff path draw of this season's Champions League. Alta's getting the winner between FK Partizan and Shamrock Rovers for this roundabout, and after a draw against Runheim and a win against Christiansund in the Elite Sedian, it turns out that it will be the Irish champions in Shamrock Rovers who will be facing Alta for the right to enter the Champions League group stage. <coughs> Alright, I know how these things come in twos with how this entire saga has been going. Come on, give it to me. Who's the next one going on the injury reserve list? Uh... Cool, we can move on now. So, the Champions League playoff path starts with Alta going to Ireland for the first time around, and they proceed to beat Shamrock Rovers thoroughly in their own home with a dominant 3 0 win. While they get a much tougher game from Rovers when they come to Norway, it's not enough to overturn the aggregate, and for the second straight year, Alta are in the Champions League group stage. You know what? I'm confident in Alta to secure another playoff knockout round again. So with those Champions League game group stages put on the schedule, they wrap up the month with a win against Bodu Glimt to head into September still undefeated through the current Norwegian campaign, and Olaf Fury feels comfortable enough with the team that he's built to not make any other moves in the transfer deadline window. The unbeaten streak nearly came to an end early in September, as Molda FK gave him a run for their money, but a returning Morton Sponus managed to get a goal at the 93rd minute to rescue a point and keep him from their first loss. That game made it 20 unbeaten games in the Elite Setting for Alta, 27 unbeaten in total for all other competitions. Olaf Fury proceeds to get his boys dialed back in on defense after the Molda game, as their next three games in a row are 1 1 0 against Songdal, SK Brun, and Tkomsu within the Elite Serien, and even their first Champions League game against Atalanta ends in the same result. 
the end of September leads into the Norwegian Cup semi-final against Odds BK, and after three goals in three minutes are scored early in the second half, Alta securely punch their ticket back to Oslo for the Norwegian Cup final, where they'll get a chance at revenge for last season's semi-final against Lillestgum. We want the goal, sucker! Hulk Hogan, we coming for you! But the work continues, as Alta flew out to Turkey to face Fernebace. But even in a hostile environment, they managed to secure a 2 0 win. <laughs> but in good news, a victory over Strum's gut set and results going accordingly across the league guarantee the retention of the Elite Assadian for Alta. But even with the title secured, there was still something to play for as the unbeaten streak within the Elite Assadian was within reach. A draw against Lillestgum put them five games away from that goal, but before they could go any further, Real Madrid made their way above the Arctic Circle for Alta to host them in the next Champions League game. Ivan Molina scored a counter-attack goal within the first six minutes, and it all kind of goes downhill from there as Real Madrid scored three straight and even a Luis Guilherme goal in stoppage time isn't enough to salvage things as Los Blancos give Alta their first defeat in a while. It doesn't stop Alta from continuing their form in the Elite Sedian as they beat Stabek to wrap up October and start off November with a win over IK Start and then Freiburg in the Champions League to get back to four... Four to six days later. Giardine White tries his best, but in a cruel twist of fate, it's Rosenberg who finally hands Alta their first defeat of the season to maintain their status as the only team in Norway to have an unbeaten season. Odds BK and Viking FK follow suit in the last two games of the Elite Sedian to hand Alta defeats due to fighting for their own Elite Sedian lives, but at that point, Olaf Fury was starting to rotate the lineups to keep the team fresh for their next Champions League bouts, and then, of course, the Norwegian Cup final. Basel was dealt with in the Champions League in dominant fashion, even if the scoreboard doesn't show it, and while they end up with a disappointing draw against Fire Nord, the points are still enough to have Alta secure their playoff spot for the second year running. They'd worry about Paris Saint-Germain and Napoli at another time because for now, it was finally a chance at revenge for last year. Lillestgum had been solid throughout the year as they managed a 5th place finish, but a Norwegian Cup win would get them Europa League football over Europa Conference League football next year, while Alta was in this for their own pride and the chance at their second ever domestic double. Andreas Lerkehau would also insist in playing the final, even though he was still technically supposed to be recovering from his earlier injury in the season. The game would start horribly, as Lillestrum would pounce on the fact that Lurkehal may have rushed his return by scoring two goals within 15 minutes. But after a thorough yelling in the locker room, Alta came back with more life in the second half, and Morten Sponis proved exactly as to why he would be headed to the Premier League next summer by equalizing within the first 20 minutes of the second half. This would bring the Norwegian Cup final into extra time. Morten Sponis would yet again come through in the clutch with a third goal in the 102nd minute, and then Alten Onuslund would add a fourth goal in the 111th minute to wrap things up and guarantee Alta IF their second domestic double in three years. It's a massive achievement for the club and a high note to go into before the move into the new stadium next year. It's also worth noting that while Spunas or Sungyun have dominated the headlines, it was Ivan Molina who had emerged as the main goal scoring threat for the club throughout the season with 23 across all competitions, which got him voted as the fans' player of the season, young player of the season, and signing of the season. Not to mention the historic season by Andreas Lerkehal, who established the new Elite Serien shutout record with 16 of them, and he was one of the key reasons along with Alta's defense that led to Alta having the fewest goals conceded and most shutouts throughout the league. Olaf Fury's work was being noticed in all corners of the world as well, as he was approached just before the offseason about interviewing for the Newcastle United job. But given how comfortable he's been in his native home and in helping Alta turn from a semi-professional club into a Norwegian powerhouse, 
he opted to decline. He had two more years left on his contract deal with Alta, and so he made a decision after declining the wins of the Premier League. Ola Fury Solskjaer would take his team as far as they can go, and one very particular trophy was now his endgame.